Hi friends, my name is Akhil Ahmed and in this particular video tutorial, I will show you how to import specific month's CSV files to SQL Server using SSIS. So recently I got a question from one of my subscriber, Giri, and he asked that I need to load a specific monthly files, all files using SSIS, how to do it. For example, if I need an August month load, all August file should be imported into SQL Server table and if I need a February month load, all February month files should be inserted into the SQL Server table. So let's see how we can do that. So let's jump to the demo. So in my D files location, I got four CSV files and if you see the date modified of first two files, so the date modified is for the first file, the date modified is 12th June 2022 and for another file, the date modified is 29th June 2021. Okay. So the first two files, the month is June and for the remaining two files like Feb 5 and Feb 7, uh, the month is February, like 7th February 2023, okay, for both the files. So for example, if I pass the month as Feb, then these two files, like the last two CSV files, emails underscore Feb 5 and emails underscore Feb 7, these two files should be imported to the SQL Server table. And for example, if I pass the month name as June, then the above two files like emails.csv and email underscore 2021 0620.csv. These two files should be inserted to the SQL Server table. So I have SQL Server 2019 instance and in the test database, I got a table, email table and this is empty as of now. Okay. So we will be importing the data from the CSV files from these CSV files into the SQL Server table. And the last column is the file path. So we will also insert the actual file path that we are loading into the SQL Server table. So we know that like which file is being imported so that we can easily identify the records imported from a CSV file. So let me create the SSIS package for importing a specific months of files. Okay. So this is my blank SSIS package that we'll be using today. And we need to declare a few variables here so that we can pass the month name and we can also look through different CSV files. So let me open the variables pane here and the first variable I will declare is the file path. This variable will be used to loop through multiple CSV files. So the data type will be string here and I need to provide an initial value here. Okay. So I can copy the path from here and I can paste it here. Another variable I will declare is the month name and the data type will be string and um, maybe we can provide the value like fab and the another variable that I will declare is the status like either we should import the data from the file or we should not import the data from the file and uh, the value can be maybe success or fail so for example if the value will be fail then the file won't be imported and if the value will be success then the file should be imported so these are the things like we have declared three variables here. Now what I need to do is that I can use a for each loop container here so that we can just loop through multiple files. So I can right click and I can configure the for each loop container here. From the collection, I will select the for each file enumerator so that it can loop through multiple files in a directory. And from the folder, I need to give the path to which path we need to loop through all that CSV files. So our CSV files are situated inside D files location. So I will select this location and I can click on OK. And I will be importing only the CSV files so I can provide a value star.csv here so that it can just loop through all the CSV files only. And then I can click on variable mapping and from here I will select the file path SSIS variable. So that for each iteration of the CSV file the current file path will be assigned to the file path SSIS variable. Now I can click on OK. Now here uh, we can use an script task and inside the script task we can just uh, get the month name of a CSV file. Okay. And then we can just compare that month name with the month name value provided here using SSIS variable. And if both the months are matched then only those particular files will be imported. Otherwise the files won't be imported. So I can just right click and I can configure the script task. From the read only variable, I will select the file path SSIS variable and the month name as well. Okay. And then inside the read write variable, I will select the status. Like status will 
either be fail or it will be pass like fail or pass yeah that should be fine now i can click on edit script so that it can open the script editor for me all right so the script editor window has been opened up so we need to actually write our code here inside the main method and i actually already written the code and i can just simply copy this code from here and i can paste it inside the main method and i can explain you like what we are doing here this pretty straightforward so in the first line we are just getting the file path value from the ssis variable into a local variable then we are getting the month name from the ssis variable to the local variable then we have declared a status variable here and we have assigned the initial value as fail okay now we are getting the last modified value from the csv file and then we are getting the month name from the last modified date now we are checking if the month name that we got from the csv file if it is equal to the month name provided by the ssis variable if they are equal then you will set the status to pass and then we'll assign this value to the ssis variable status so what will happen if the status will be passed then the file will be imported because the month name will match and if the status won't be passed means it will be failed then the file won't be imported okay so we can use the precedence constants and we can just check this one so i can click on file exit and now i can click on okay now i can just drag and drop the data flow task into the for each loop container and i can connect the script task with the data flow task i can right click on the precedence constants and i can click on edit from the evaluation operation i will select expression and constants and i can click on these three dots from the variables i can just drag and drop the status variable into the expression and i can write a condition if status equal to pass okay and then i can click on evaluate expression click okay okay so if status will be pass then we can import the data okay so i can just drag and drop the flat file source into the data flow task and i can configure the flat file source here click new to create a new flat file connection manager and i can browse the csv file file type is csv file so i can select any file from here click open if i click on preview so i can see that the data seems good here i can click on okay okay now because we also want to get the file path and want to insert into the sql server table so i can just drag and drop the dried column transformation here and i can connect the flat file source with the dried column transformation and then i can configure the dried column transformation here uh, from the variables and parameters i can just drag and drop the file path into the expression and i can just give a data type and length to this particular new column dt underscore str comma 1000 so this will be of length 1000 1252 is the code page for the worker and the column name i will give is file path so a new column file path will be added to the data flow and the value will come from the file path ssis variable so i can click on ok now i can just use the oldb destination here to insert the data to the sql server table email and i can connect the dried column transformation with the oldb destination and then i can configure the oldb destination here click new to create an oldb connection manager we already have a connection manager here that will connect to the test database onto the sql server to the 19 instance now i can click on ok from data access mode i will select table or view fast load uh, from the list of tables i can select the email table from here i can click on mappings so that the input columns have been mapped with the destination columns now i can click on ok so this seems good and our ssis package is almost ready now the only difference is that we need to make the flat file connection manager as dynamic so i can right click on it go to the properties from here i need to go to the expressions and i need to set the connection string property from the ssis variable file path because inside the connection string property the actual file path value is assigned so i can click on ok now our ssis package is ready here and if i check the data now in the email table so right now the email table is empty okay and here we have the data for two months for june and for the fab so right now the initial value given to the month name is fab so ideally it should import the data for the fab month and we have the two files for the fab month so let me start running the ssis package and it should import the data for the fab month so the package ran fine and if i go back to the ssms and if i execute the query here so you can see here the data has been imported from the uh, file emails underscore fab5 and from the file emails underscore fab7 okay 
the data has been imported from the two different files okay 1000 records have been imported from each file so here we are importing the data for the fab month now suppose if i want to import the data for another month like maybe for the june month then i just need to pass the value as june okay i just need to pass the first three characters from the uh, month name okay so if i click on start now so this should import the data for the june month so the process ran fine and if i go back to the ssms and if i recheck the data in the email table so now this data is from the june month so the emails.csv file have been imported and then the emails underscore 2021 0620.csv file has been imported so these two files are from the june month so i think that's what we wanted from the ssis package so i will share this code with you and the csv files used here and maybe the create table statement for the email table as well yeah so i think that's it for today's video thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button do subscribe to our channel press the bell icon and click on also that you will be notified every time i upload a new video thank you so much